Awesome. Okay. Is anybody here for the first time? Benjamin. All right, cool. Nice to meet you. My name is Graham, and um, I'm the youth leader of this, this youth. And um, tonight I just want to share with you all um, something. And my, my, my message title is, Can I Really Talk to God? But before we go into that, you know, let, let me bring you back into um, 2009, okay? Um, in, in 2009, what happened? Anyone you know? Near camp. Near camp, that's right. Near camp, that was when I found Christ, that was when I found Jesus. And um, what happened was, um, I, I remember this, this moment when, um, it was quite a touching moment um, between me and Derek. Um, <laughs> what happened was, I was, it was, it was the last night of camp. And um, pretty much it was quite intense, like the presence of God was there, that's what, that's what everybody was saying. But to me, I was, I was kind of like, I was new, I was brand new, and I didn't really understand what was going on, but everybody was like falling down their knees, so I was like, okay, so I'm just going to sit down. So I sat down, and then I was just like thinking, thinking and thinking, and I'm just like, oh, what's happening, man? Like, you know, why all these people go like crazy, like they cry, some of them cry, some of them face down, like face palm to the floor and all this and John was like on the floor and all that and um, the person who, who came up to me was Derek um, Derek, show up your hand Where are you? Where are you? Right there, that's the guy that, That's the guy Okay, so Derek came in and then he was like Frame, can I pray for you? And at that moment I was like Wow, like, you know, like I never um, You know, like that was the first time that somebody came up to me and offered a prayer for me. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. I wonder what was this going to, like, you know, is there any magical things going to happen to me or like, you know, something going to happen to me or something. But yeah, so he prayed for me. And then, you know, like, I, I, can't, I can't tell you what he was praying, I couldn't remember. But I felt love from him and I felt like, oh, like, this is so cool, you know, I felt like, you know, brotherly love and all that. I remember after he prayed for me, I still said, like, bro, I love you, you know? Um, <laughs> so, but then the other thing, that the other thought that goes into my mind was that this guy is talking to God. This guy is talking to God and he's telling God about me. He's telling God about maybe, you know, like, he was thanking God that I came to know him. And at that time, I was like, oh, that's cool. Well, since now I'm a Christian, might as well start praying, right? So I, he was the first person who encouraged me to pray, to start praying, to start wanting to talk to God more. And what happened was that after that, um, a few months after, I I was really um, <clears throat> enthusiastic to um, to to pray, and um, and then I went I went up a super It was up on this stage, and um, it was uh, Sarah um, and a few other guys. There were doing a inspiration prayer and all that. So I joined them. And then what happened was, I was like, I, I was quite shy and I didn't know how to pray. So I was just like, can I be like second last? And then Sarah was like, oh, okay, something like that. And then I was just like staying there. And all the time the people were praying, I listened to them and I tried to steal their words. <laughs> That's what happened. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool, I like that word. That sounds good, I'm gonna say it, you know. And then, um, when it comes to my turn, I forgot everything. <laughs> and, you know, I just, I, I still remember what I said. I was like, Dear me, Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. <laughs> You're my everything. Amen. <laughs> That's what I said. I still remember that. And, and like, I'm just like, oh man, this is bad. <laughs> now, you know, like, <clears throat> there's a question here. You know, like, how, how many of you are in the similar shoes to me? Like, you know, how many of you feel similar to me, like you, you maybe be a Christian for, for a while and you kind of like, I don't really know how to pray, I don't I really like, I can talk to God or I might just say things out loud and just hope that somebody out there will hear me or like, you know, I just have no clue and tonight my goal is that I want to teach you more about prayer and I hope that when you leave this room, you know, your prayer life will be different, okay? That's Father, Heavenly Father, um, tonight, Lord, I just, I just want Your words to come to life, and God, I pray that Your words will speak to Your people, Lord, through me. And God, I pray, Lord, that if there's any, um, if there's anything that 
is in between you and I, Lord. I pray that may you remove it. And God, I just pray that may you work through me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Okay. So the first thing that we need to know is we can talk to God. We can talk to the everlasting God. We can talk to the, the creator of this universe. But do you know that when I, when I know that, I was like, oh, that's cool, man. Like, you know, I, I can talk to God, you know, like, I, I kind of treat him like just a buddy or like, you know, like, oh, yeah, God's cool. You know, when I talk to him, I, I didn't really, I, I kind of like forget, I kind of like forgot that, um, that God is so powerful and, you know, God is like kings and all this. And all I thought was like, oh, yeah, I can talk to God like how I talk to my friend. And that's one of the issues too. Um, that's one of the issues that many people might face. You know, many of you may treat God as if like He's just a buddy, or maybe your prayer life is just like a duty that you have to do every night. You know, because someone says so, you must pray, you must read your Bible. You know, it's become like a chore for you. I wonder how many people are thinking like that. But let me give you something new. Let me give you a new perspective. So, so what's the proper way? To talk to God, you know, is it like, is it is it best to stand up and pray, or sitting down, or kneeling, or bowing down, or should my hands be open while I'm praying, or should I put my hands up while I'm praying? <clears throat> you know, or like you might be scared, like oh man, like you know, if I don't say the things that, uh, if I don't say it right, then God will chop me, you know, God will kill me or something. Nah, none of that, you know. Um, the truth is. God doesn't answer based on what you pray. What we are, or how we order your, our words when we pray. But, we still have to show that reverence. You know, we still have to show that respect. Because the Bible didn't say, you must do this, you must kneel down. Doesn't mean that you don't have to. Doesn't mean that you, you can just, you know, chill out and like, God, I'm here. None of that, okay? So, the proper way to pray is to pour out your hearts, to pour out our hearts to God, and being honest and open with God. <clears throat> because you know why? Because He already knows you. He already knows us better than we know ourselves. He created us. And God's desire is the, the prayer to be real and personal connection between Himself and us. Now you know when, when I said that, even you know to be real, how real can it be when you pray to God? You know, is it? You know, maybe you go through pain. You go through. Maybe you try to let go of something. Maybe you go. You 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 have like this pain and this. You're facing this situation that you just you know you just have no hope and you just kind of like. For, uh, you just don't want to go up to God and say anything. You just don't feel like it. And you just feel like, oh man, maybe God's not real anymore. You know, maybe you might feel that way. But let me show you an, an example in Psalms 10 verse 1. This guy is going through the same thing. And this is what he said. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? You see, he's, 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 he's feeling like, in times of trouble, like, uh, uh, you know, like, he feel like, why God, like, stands so far off? Like, he asking God, but yet, he still come and pray and ask God that. Why are you so far? How many of you do that? How many of, how many of you actually go up to God, like, God, I don't know what happened to me, but I just don't feel like you're with me. I just, I just can't feel you, you know? Or, do you just, uh, yeah, I can't feel God. I guess he's not here. I guess he's not real. Let's go do something else better. Is it is that the right attitude? And then, but then um, in verse fourteen later on, and then he said, "But you, O oh God, do you do you see trouble and grief? Do you consider it to take it in hands? The victim commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless." As you can see, you know, like in times of the trouble, you, he know he know that like God listened to him. God, God knows, and you have so much faith in this, and you know, out of all this, out of all that I said, you know, it comes down to this, it comes down to, to the grace which has been paid on that cross, the song that you sing, at the cross, that's why 
we now we can have like the true relationship with God and we can pray, we can talk to Him. Now we know, we know that, we know that how we should come to God. The next point is um, God hears our cries and our needs. God hears it. Um, last year, I, um, around this time actually, I, oh no, actually in January, I, I lost my job. And um, it was bad because that was the only income that I get. And um, I go through this, you know, I have to use my saving, I just brought a car, I have to pray, I have to pay for insurance, I have to pay for petrol, I have to pay for all these other expenses, uh, all these other things I have to pay for. And, um, and then I came down to, like, I, I don't have much money left that I need to pay for my insurance. And through that, it was, it was kind of like, it was really bad situation for me. And I was just like, oh man, there's no way out of this. Like, you know, like, you know what, like, you know, I, I know my God, He will provide. So I started to pray and I just like, God, like, I, I pray that uh, may you hear my cries and like, you know, I really need your help. I really need you. And what happened was, you know, I thought the situation would be better because I found a job right after I prayed. Like, you know, God, hallelujah, you know, like God gave me, God gave me a job right after that, that prayer. But then, on the second week that I start working, um, I skip you, okay, I skip you, because um, for some reason I have to work on that Saturday night. And then when I work on that Saturday night, I, on the way home it was raining, and you know, um, the high road, um, there's a big roundabout there. I was going on that roundabout around 40 kilometers per hour. And the road was slippery. And then my car started to spin. Like, I'm, I kid you not, it was spinning, 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 and hit the curb. And like, I was just like, oh, oh, I'm screwed. Like, <laughs> I'm a I just, you know, I found a job, I was so happy, but what's happening now, you know, like, what's happening? And, you know, like, the car couldn't move. And I was just like, I was just sitting in my car, I was just like, what's going on? You know, like, I was in shock. And then right after that, the cops came, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know, like, and a couple of cops just came from nowhere, and I'm like, whoa, dude, you're, you're doing a good job. And then, like, and then five cops, like, just jumped off the car, and they're like, are you okay, are you okay? And I'm just like, whoa, am I getting arrested or something? <laughs> but, um, you know, he, and then they, apparently they got a, a, a duty to do. And then someone drove past me who didn't help me, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, I, I, I found out after that Jason um, drove past me, but then he didn't know it was me. So what happened after is, um, I lost my car. My car was gone. And I'm just like, okay, awesome. Like, you know, I thought it was good. But then, did you know, did you know that um, that was happening on Saturday, right? On Monday was when my insurance um, payment due. And I was under the full, um, full insurance cover. And before that, I was about to change to third party, but I didn't. So, in that period of time, I still un uh, I'm still under the full cover insurance, therefore I'm losing my car, but I still get my money back. And the money that I'm getting back is more than what I paid for the car. Therefore, I'm getting more money. You know, like, I was just like, oh wow, like, you know, thank God, you know, because, you know, he didn't cause this accident to happen, but he used this accident, and, you know, he used it for good. And the best part is, like, when I got into the accident, I got no injury. And I didn't get like my necks or whatever, but I didn't get none of that. And um, you know, like my situation, my situation was bad, and it seems like it's pos impossible to get out of it. But yet God used this accident to turn it into good. And if you argue with me, like I, I can tell you, there's no way that all this can happen by chance. Like I'm just like, come on, like you know, I believe that God is in control of this. Because if I got into a car crash a day after Monday, I will be in big, big, big trouble, like I tell you. And my question is, how about you? Is there any area in your life that, you know, like you need, you need God's help, but then you never ask Him? Maybe you're going through a relationship problem. Maybe you're going through something that is big and you can't tell anybody and you just kept it kept it um, onto yourself and 
never share to another, uh, other, other people. And you never choose to pray to God. You never choose to ask Him. Why? Maybe you got pride. Maybe, maybe past experience. Maybe you felt like, oh, I prayed before, but God didn't really hear my cries, you know? And I guess God's not real. Is that why? Now, let me, let me give you... <clears throat> um, let me give you some of the Bible verse that um, that will help you out, okay? So, the Bible says, Psalm 34, 17, it says, The righteous cried out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. See, it said, The righteous cried out, and the Lord hears them. Do you know, often sometimes, when, when we pray, maybe there's sins in you that kind of like hinder you from God. Maybe... Maybe God already, He's already hear what you're saying, but when He's talking back to you, you might not be able to hear Him because of your sins. That's why before we come to God, you know, like, the prayer of um, confession, you know, like, you, you ask for repenting of your sins and make right with God so that there's no brick in front of you. Um, there's, a, there's a story when, you know, like, when you sin, it's like you're putting a brick in front of you. And then the more you sin, you put more brick, 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 and you're building up this wall. And then until you can't see the person opposite to you, that's, that's what happened. So make sure that you remove all the brick, you can see God, you write with God, you're connected with God, so that when you pray, He hears you, and He will deliver you out of the troubles. Now, the third point um, is that God can turn the impossible to the possible. Now the best the best example for this is this. Um, <clears throat> uh, if anybody knows Joshua, um, you know how he was he went into the war with Amorite people and tried to take the land. And then what he did was like, oh man, I need to I need the sun to stand still for a while, for longer than a, um, I think it was the whole day. And um, <clears throat> and then what he did was he prayed to God. He asked God that. And then. Um, God answered his prayer, and God did that, and God helped him, you know, like the sun stood still, and it was a miracle, you know, like it, it seemed, it's, it's impossible to do it, and like, but yet, because he is God, you know, he can do the impossible into the possible. Now, you know, the point is that it's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, God is cool, and God, you know, make miracles and all that, but what I want to point out to you is that Joshua chose to pray first. He didn't like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to go back home and I'm just going to think about how to cure this MRI or how to battle with all this MRI. But the first thing that he shows was he wanted to pray. He prayed. He went away straight away and then he prayed to God. <clears throat> and I want to ask you, you know, like, when you face same, you know, like maybe difficult situations, or um, maybe you encounter something that was hard and it's impossible for you to overcome. The operation was successful. And so the next morning we thought, oh, maybe they'll allow us to touch his arm, or, you know, we thought he was probably still unconscious. And we walked around the corner and kind of took a second, you know, look at each other back at him, and he was sitting up in bed, and the tubes were out, and he was eating ice. It's a miracle. So then by Monday, because Doug had just progressed so quickly beyond what they had uh, expected him to, he was out of ICU, and we were able to get the work screen in there under his internet. And, uh, Vernon knew that Doug was going to get a chance to watch. Let me tell you about somebody else that I know is online and with his family worshiping with us. Doug Hill is one of our elders at the Oviedo uh, location of Northland. Doug had a life-threatening emergency, but it's just a miracle that Doug is with us. And not only is he with us, but he had got up and walked around today and he and his whole family are at the hospital worshiping online with us. And Doug, it's an answer to prayer that you're with us. And so we're so thankful that God is here. And uh, Doug's normally not much of a crier, but he just began to weep. And uh, it was just so amazing. And then we got to 
in times of need, in times of crisis, the church, God's body is there for us. As you can see in that video, you know, like, you know the power of prayer. You know that it's real. You know that when two or three more come and gather and pray, you know, like, it works. Like, you know, there's, there's a miracle. And um, what I want you guys to do now is to get into a group. You know, like, I'm sure all of us here are going through something. I want you to be able to share that with your friends and ask them, can you pray for me? Because you know that, as I said, you can talk to God and He hears your cries and your needs. He knows your needs and He's the God of, you know, the God that can, can turn the impossible to the possible. And if you believe that tonight, I want you to pray for someone. And not just that, I want you to maybe, you know, like follow up and see, hey, Maybe in a couple of days time, you, you ask that person, how's your life going? You know, is it getting better? Is God answering your prayer? That's how it works, guys. You know, it's a relationship. You know, you don't do prayer because it's a duty. You do it because you know God and you, you know that He can. Yes, He can. So all you need to do now is to get into a group. Just three, four people, that's fine. Just the group that you're comfortable with. You can sit in a circle. 